so uh, we will be starting now uh, this uh, webinar. And uh, uh, the first thing uh, is uh, I want uh, to thank you for joining. Uh, this uh, subject that uh, we are uh, having today is uh, not very well known, um, but uh, I think uh, we will all uh, learn a little bit together. I am your host, uh, I am Marisabel Caballero, and uh, I work as a technical manager for poultry uh, with EW Nutrition, a German-based company. And with me, I have uh, two panelists uh, who uh, will uh, be uh, also hosting this webinar. Um, uh, the first one is uh, Claudio Campanelli. Uh, he's uh, the product manager uh, for Masters. Uh, Claudio, introduce yourself, please. Just uh, hello to everybody. Yes, uh, uh, my name is Claudio Campanelli. I am actually a global product manager for Masters of Line, which is our mycotoxin binder in EW Nutrition. I have been working here since uh, November 2014, and uh, but uh, since the, uh, the beginning of 2018 as a product management in the product management. And uh, thank you very much. Um, our uh, second panelist is uh, Tuan Mangerbe, and uh, uh, Tuan uh, is um, uh, from the Netherlands. I am from Honduras. Uh, Tuan, please introduce yourself. Hi all. I'm uh, Tuan Mangerbe. I'm uh, team lead global technical management poultry. So I will be collaborating with any poultry specific topic or question that I hopefully will be able to answer. Well, uh, thanks uh, both. Uh, we have a nice and international panel uh, and uh, this uh, audience uh, today is also very international. And uh, there are many participants in this call uh, joining uh, from uh, different countries. Um, just a few technical points. Um, so we can explain a little bit the setup of the webinar. Uh, this presentation will last around 40 minutes. During the presentation, you can ask anything you want in uh, the question and answer um, a poll or button uh, that uh, you can uh, find at the bottom of your screen. So there's a Q&A form. It will open itself and uh, you can ask uh, questions in written. Um, uh, most of the questions uh, will be uh, hopefully answered. If uh, the answer is short and simple, they will be answered in real time by the panelists. This is the advantage uh, of uh, having panelists today. Um, if uh, they require a longer time or if uh, the answer is more complex, uh, then uh, we will uh, have it uh, for uh, the entire audience uh, by um, speaking. Um, we will uh, also save uh, some time at the end of the presentation for a question and answer session. So we will uh, have uh, some important questions uh, answered uh, live. And uh, at the end uh, of this webinar, uh, once we are done, uh, we would like uh, to uh, have uh, your feedback uh, to know your opinion. Um, uh, so we will uh, request uh, you uh, to uh, fill a poll. And uh, uh, this, um, uh, this uh, poll uh, will be uh, displayed. Uh, this poll will be uh, displayed uh, in, um, in, uh, in your screen and uh, you can answer it in real time. Very good. Uh, so uh, now uh, we, uh, we start uh, with uh, the presentation uh, that we want uh, to share with you today. And uh, uh, we will uh, talk about um, uh, gut health as an important topic in poultry production, especially when we talk about antibiotic production scenarios. But uh, let's remember uh, that uh, the gut, however, is a very complex environment. Uh, we will focus today on some of the factors uh, that participate in the complexity uh, that uh, comprises gut health. Uh, these factors uh, have the potential to cause uh, disruptions. And these disruptions uh, can affect animal welfare, animal health and performance. We will focus on two of these factors, mycotoxins and endotoxins. And uh, these are ubiquitous, omnipresent disruptors uh, of uh, gut health. We will see how these two factors interact with other factors and we will discuss a couple of strategies to cope 
uh, with uh, these uh, ever-present uh, threats. Um, so first, uh, let me start uh, by um, talking about uh, the God in its uh, complexity. Uh, the objective of the God is to comply uh, with uh, digestion, absorption, and barrier functions. Uh, we have many factors that collide at the same time uh, in the gastrointestinal tract. So for example, from immunity uh, that is inherited uh, from the breeders, uh, for example, uh, the hatching and rearing environment. And uh, we have also other factors uh, like uh, feed changes, uh, like uh, feedborne mycotoxins, uh, like uh, um, um, environmental factors uh, that uh, all together uh, can, uh, well, on one side be in equilibrium and the animal uh, keeps healthy or uh, be disrupted uh, and uh, we can turn uh, this environment against the animal leading to loss of uh, function of uh, the gastrointestinal tract and uh, to disease. When we talk about uh, one of the factors uh, that, um, that was mentioned, so mycotoxins, we uh, only can think about unwanted visitors. So first, uh, feedborne mycotoxins are an unwanted visitor in relation to gut health. Uh, nevertheless, and unfortunately, they are unavoidable. So let me show you the results of uh, EW Nutrition uh, mycotoxin survey for the, uh, the last half of 2019. Uh, we can tell uh, that uh, the mycotoxins uh, that uh, represent the higher risk are uh, practically dioxinivalenol and fumonesin. Uh, both of them uh, are, were found with very high levels when we talk about the maximum these levels uh, have uh, the capacity uh, to, uh, let's say, uh, show uh, really uh, marked uh, symptoms of uh, mycotoxicosis. They uh, can even lead to a high mortality uh, and uh, decrease the uh, welfare of the animals. However, uh, when uh, we take uh, the average levels, uh, what uh, we can see is uh, that the levels are not that high, but uh, they are close uh, to the threshold levels, depending on the animal, of course, uh, but uh, uh, we are focusing on poultry today. And yes, uh, some of these levels are close to threshold levels for poultry. However, when we, talk, when we say threshold levels, uh, we mean uh, levels that, uh, in which uh, the animal starts, let's say, experimenting uh, some uh, changes uh, due to this mycotoxin contamination. Sometimes these changes will not even lead to decrease of performance. But this is uh, when we talk about uh, only a mycotoxin uh, with one, uh, a contamination, sorry, with one mycotoxin. Normally in the feed, uh, we will have a, a multiple uh, mycotoxin contamination we will uh, find uh, frequently, for example, uh, deoxinivalenol and fumonesin together. Uh, both of these mycotoxins, yes, they are produced by fusarium fungi. Uh, they can be uh, colonizing uh, the uh, same raw material. They, they belong to different species, however, but the different species uh, of uh, the fungi can colonize one uh, crop. And uh, they uh, also uh, have uh, one characteristic when we talk about deoxinivalenol and fumonesin is, and it is that most of the contamination will remain in the gut. So they will for sure be part of the negative uh, interacting uh, factors uh, that uh, we can find uh, for uh, gut health. Well, now we have learned uh, that uh, we have a higher risk when it comes uh, to uh, Don and Fumonesin. Uh, we also have found uh, some uh, aflatoxin and other mycotoxins, but the main risk uh, in uh, this uh, survey and uh, probably in uh, this year is uh, coming uh, from uh, these two mycotoxins. Um, 
also we said that the fumonesins uh, and uh, don't they remain in the gastrointestinal tract. We know that uh, because a uh, mycotoxin uptake and tissue distribution is ruled well by the absorption in the gastrointestinal tract and it is species specific and it can be high for some mycotoxins uh, such as aflatoxin, for example. And uh, when we talk about aflatoxin, 80% uh, of uh, aflatoxins will be absorbed passing into the bloodstream, but the other 20% is there in the gut. Uh, when we talk about uh, fumonesins, for example, uh, well, fumonesins is, uh, constitute the group of uh, mycotoxins that gets the less absorption. So only 2% of fumonesins uh, will pass into the bloodstream and the remaining 98% stays in the gut and has uh, the potential uh, to cause disruptions uh, that lead to disease, such as, uh, for example, necrotic enteritis, and uh, such as uh, having, uh, for example, a higher susceptibility uh, to amaria, or, uh, or other, um, uh, let's say, uh, dysbiosis-related uh, um, uh, signs. Well, Finally, uh, we talk about uh, trichotocins and uh, trichotocins, uh, well, it represents a group of uh, mycotoxins, for example, uh, DON and T2. The absorption of trichotocins is very limited in poultry species uh, and is uh, uh, up uh, to 20%. Uh, so sometimes it can be a little bit higher, but uh, normally is uh, less uh, than 20%. Uh, and we have 80% of uh, trichotocins remaining in the lumen uh, of the intestine, which means uh, that, uh, yes, uh, let's remember uh, some of the um, issues caused by trichotocins, uh, like, uh, for example, interfere with immunity or a uh, change uh, the gene expression of uh, um, a certain uh, chemical messengers. And uh, there we can have alterations uh, in uh, the gut. So mycotoxins impact the intestinal functions, yes, because they can remain there. And uh, which are these functions? Well, barrier integrity, immunity, and microbiota. How do they do that? Well, uh, the damaging impact uh, of uh, mycotoxins in the intestinal epithelium occurs uh, through four basic modes of action. Well, uh, one of them uh, will be a decrease in protein synthesis. This uh, will repercute in digestion and barrier functions. Why is that? Well, first uh, we see uh, these uh, bridges here. So the these bridges are protein. The expression of these proteins uh, can be down-regulated by mycotoxins, which means uh, that uh, it can lead us uh, to and not uh, having uh, or to having opened uh, tight junctions uh, which allow the passage of uh, uh, or mycotoxins, of other toxins or of uh, pathogens into the bloodstream. Another mode of action uh, of uh, uh, mycotoxins is a, an increase in oxidative stress. How do mycotoxins do it? Uh, well, uh, first, uh, they uh, can increase the production of reactive oxygen species. Why is that? Well, because uh, when a mycotoxin enters the organism, the cells uh, want to get rid of it. They are fighting uh, to uh, take this mycotoxin out of the system. When uh, they do that, uh, there are uh, some reactive oxygen species that can be produced. But the mycotoxins also can inhibit the gene expression of uh, natural antioxidants, uh, such as uh, superoxide dismutate and, and glutathione peroxidase. So we have uh, two different pathways in which uh, mycotoxins increase oxidative stress. What is going to happen? Well, uh, when uh, the cells are um, exposed uh, to uh, a lot of reactive oxygen species, it leads to apoptosis or to the death of the cells, losing a barrier function. 
Another mode of action is the changes uh, that mycotoxins can produce in gene expression. Uh, this affects uh, the production of cytokines, uh, chemical messengers, which uh, affect the immune system. So the, the main effect can be in the immune system, but also in a cellular growth and differentiation. Another uh, mode of action, so finally, is uh, apoptosis. And apoptosis is the induction of a programmed dead cell. This affects the reposition of, uh, for example, immune and absorptive cells, increasing uh, the permeability uh, of uh, the gastrointestinal tract. So at the end of the day, what we will have is an alteration of uh, this barrier function. And at the same time, uh, for example, uh, mycotoxins also affect goblet cells, uh, which uh, are these ones. Uh, they produce the mucus uh, that is uh, covering uh, the uh, intestinal, uh, the mucosa of the intestine. And uh, by uh, doing that, uh, they uh, can also, well, in, it's one of the ways in which they also affect the microbiota. So at the end of the day, we will have open barrier, um, uh, we will have also an intestinal function um, uh, uh, like, uh, for example, uh, digestion and absorption of nutrients uh, that is disrupted. And uh, we will have a lowered immune function. This can lead, uh, of course, uh, to changes in the microbiota that are prone uh, the animals uh, to disease. Also, something very important. Is this happening? with realistic mycotoxin levels? Yes, it is. So it happens, uh, for example, with mycotoxin combinations in the levels that we have found as average in our surveys. And more importantly as well, is uh, that uh, these levels are lower than the levels that are reported as safe uh, by the EFSA, the Food Safety Agent uh, of the European Union. So the consequences uh, of uh, uh, these uh, mycotoxin challenges uh, can range from a diminished nutrient absorption uh, to inflammatory responses. And of course, uh, we can uh, have uh, some pathogenic disorders as well, which will affect the gut microbiota. So talking about the microbiota. Um, mycotoxins, uh, we said they damage uh, the intestinal epithelium and impair uh, immunity. So this leads to changes in the microbiota. And here we have some examples. Uh, these are some examples of scientific experiments with different mycotoxin levels. And what is the impact that uh, this uh, had in the microbiota or the incidence of intestinal disease? So for example, uh, some experiments uh, found a higher incidence uh, of uh, necrotic enteritis, uh, for example, uh, with the combination of uh, the oxynivalenol and fumonisone, or uh, with uh, the combination of, uh, well, it's not here, but also, uh, for example, with fumonisone alone, or with the combination of uh, T2 and uh, the oxynivalenol, which is uh, also not, uh, not in this list. Um, other experiments have found, however, a, lo a lower abundance of uh, beneficial bacteria, like uh, we can see here uh, for uh, the oxynivalenol uh, that uh, diminished lactobacillus, also fumonisin had that effect. And uh, finally, uh, we uh, have other experiments uh, that uh, simply led to a higher abundance of uh, gram-negative bacteria, and uh, we have uh, these examples, uh, for example, uh, with aflatoxin at uh, different levels. Uh, one of those uh, very realistic levels. The rest uh, of uh, the challenges uh, that we have here are easily achieved um, by uh, the maximum levels that we have found in the survey, but uh, uh, some of uh, these also by the average. So uh, the bottom line. Mycotoxins alter the microbiota, and this is in detriment of the health of the animals. So we were talking about some changes in the microbiota. And uh, one of these changes is an increase in uh, gut gram-negative bacteria. 
uh, this is leading uh, then uh, to an increase in gut endotoxins. Endotoxins are also known as uh, lipopolysaccharides or LPS. They are uh, fragments uh, of the cell walls of gram-negative bacteria. And they are released uh, once uh, the cells uh, grow or die. And uh, when we are talking about uh, poultry, and uh, of course uh, also other, uh, other animals or other organisms, the intestinal microflora is the most important source of endotoxin. Um, for this reason, also we can find that uh, enterocytes in general tolerate certain amount of endotoxins without doing nothing. Why is that? Well, uh, the normal uh, effect uh, that uh, we have from endotoxins once they pass into the bloodstream is a strong immune reaction, a strong immune response. So. Um, this is something uh, that uh, if you have this challenge always present in the gut, then of course uh, that uh, will be uh, contraproducent or against uh, the uh, health and the performance of the animal. This is why uh, the cells uh, in the gut lining are less sensitive to certain levels of endotoxins. When uh, these levels are quite high, they also can uh, get a negative effect. Um, many factors, of course, uh, can influence uh, the passage uh, of uh, endotoxins from uh, the lumen of the intestine into the bloodstream. And among these uh, factors, uh, we can find, of course, changes in feed. And uh, these changes in feed uh, that alter uh, the microbiota and favor gram-negative bacteria. Another feed factor, of course, uh, are the mycotoxins. Uh, we have uh, intestinal pathogens as well, or uh, we can also have environment uh, factors uh, such as heat stress. Uh, and uh, finally, uh, well, uh, we can also have a high release of endotoxins due to antibiotic treatment. Uh, of course, uh, when we have a treatment, uh, uh, some, oh, well, high spectrum antibiotics or gram negative specific antibiotics will kill a lot of gram negative bacteria and uh, may make a significant increase of luminal LPS. This will uh, most surely lead to an immune response even in the intestinal epithelium uh, that may end up in a, a enterocyte apoptosis. So this no good for the animal. In general, um, lipopolysaccharides or LPS, uh, they have a very similar molecular structure. So most of, well, all of them uh, have these uh, basic structures, which are the lipid A, uh, the core, which is divided in inner and outer uh, regions, and the O antigen. The O antigen uh, consists uh, normally on uh, uh, repeating uh, units of oligosaccharides. Uh, there, uh, let's say, uh, also the name uh, of uh, endotoxins, uh, part of the name of, uh, of uh, endotoxins, lipopolysaccharides. The lipid part is here, and uh, the rest is uh, composed uh, basically of repeating units of uh, um, uh, saccharides. And the O antigen uh, then is the most variable part of endotoxins. It is species specific. It's used also to differentiate bacterial serotypes and it causes an immune response when the LPS is still attached to the bacteria. So the, um, the immune system uh, recognizes uh, the uh, O antigen and of course uh, reacts to it. Now when we go to lipid A, lipid A is uh, a portion that is almost non-variable, and it is responsible for the induction of the immune responses when we talk about uh, LPS, when we talk about endotoxins. So this part here is uh, the responsible for stimulating uh, this uh, a high immune response uh, in uh, the organism. And uh, um, uh, well, uh, we will see how uh, this uh, immune response uh, can uh, uh, can get. 
Uh, so we have here uh, a study in uh, which LPS induced inflammation in a chicken uh, ileal explant. So first, let's take a look at some ex vivo uh, studies. In this study, um, an explant culture model was, was used uh, for investigating uh, the short-term uh, gut inflammatory responses. So uh, the tissue it was exposed uh, to increasing levels of LPS uh, coming from E. coli. These levels were, of course, a control group with zero. Then uh, 10, uh, 20, and uh, 50 uh, micrograms per ml or E. coli LPS. Uh, what was measured here? Well, uh, first, uh, the gene expression of a toll like receptor 4, TLR4. And it is an important uh, recognition receptor uh, during inflammatory responses. It can recognize, for example, gram-negative bacteria, and it is the primary receptor for LPS. What we can see when a TLR4 gene expression was measured is uh, that uh, we uh, have an increase uh, with the increasing levels of uh, LPS. And the same happens with interleukin-8. Interleukin-8 is an inflammatory cytokine that activates immunity. So basically for both parameters, the measured gene expression, and this is in relation with the control group, which is this one. So we have here, for example, around 1.25 times um, um, the control group. And here uh, we have a, a 1.8 times the control group. So uh, for uh, both, um, parameters, uh, we can see a dose-dependent increase uh, of uh, um, the expression of uh, this, um, uh, of, uh, this uh, uh, first the, the gene expression of receptor and uh, the gene expression uh, of the chemokine. However, when we see the last bar, it doesn't obey uh, the same uh, pattern that we have seen. And uh, uh, well, it was the maximum level that was used, but at the same time, they, uh, the researchers noted a lower tissue liveability. So at the end of the day, uh, the gene expression, uh, let's say, uh, got inhibited, uh, but uh, because uh, the cells uh, were basically dying. So the bottom line here is LPS induce immune response in chicken intestinal tissue. So ex vivo, Yes, it uh, induces uh, this uh, immune response. But what happens with broilers? Well, in uh, this study, uh, broilers were challenged with a single dose of intraperitoneal LPS. And uh, uh, they, uh, they were, the LPS uh, were coming uh, from E. coli, and the dose was quite, quite high. So it was uh, one uh, milligram uh, per kilogram of live weight. Why intraperitoneal? Well, we uh, said at the beginning uh, that for obtaining this immune response, the LPS have to be in the bloodstream. They have to pass from uh, the intestinal barrier into the bloodstream. So this is the reason why in these uh, challenge uh, trials, uh, it's, uh, it is used the intraperitoneal uh, application of LPS. However, um, the immune uh, response was achieved. Um, so uh, different, uh, the gene expression of uh, uh, different uh, genes related uh, with um, immunity uh, were measured, uh, and uh, we can see them uh, in the left, in the graph in the left side. All of uh, these uh, are expressed uh, in relation uh, with the control group. Uh, so, for example. Uh, when we talk about a toll-like receptor 4, uh, it was increased uh, approximately 1.6 uh, times uh, what, of, uh, what was obtained uh, with the control group. And uh, when we check interleukin-6, it was basically double of the control group. So pro-inflammatory cytokines uh, were stimulated uh, by uh, the challenge. What happened with the barrier function? Well, endotoxins do not only affect uh, the uh, cells of the intestine or the intestine on the apical side, 
and this is only when they are at very high levels. But when we go to the other side, when we go to the uh, basolateral side, then uh, endotoxins can also affect the gut and can also affect gut functions. Uh, of course, if we go uh, to these levels is uh, because uh, we have a very uh, high problem uh, with the flock. What uh, was uh, measured here is uh, the, um, the production uh, or the gene expression of uh, a tight junction proteins. And they were basically downregulated. A downregulation up to 50% was observed, for example, for a cloudy two. So on one side, inflammation, on the other side, less per year function. Also, in uh, the same researchers also measure oxidative stress uh, that uh, could be uh, that was induced uh, by the challenge uh, of LPS. So first uh, we see a total antioxidant capacity diminished both in uh, jejunum and in ileum. So the antioxidant capacity was uh, basically compromised and also uh, the gene expression of uh, natural antioxidants such as uh, superoxide dismutase, a catalase, and uh, also a uh, glutathione peroxidase uh, were affected. Uh, the last one uh, was uh, the most affected and uh, uh, the uh, gene expression was around uh, 50 percent of what was achieved with the control group. On uh, uh, this uh, side uh, what uh, we have is the apoptotic index. Why is that? Well let's remember inflammation, oxidative stress, it leads to apoptosis. And uh, the apoptotic uh, index uh, of uh, both jejunum and ileum was evaluated. In the jejunum, it was, uh, for example, double of uh, the uh, index in the control group. And in the ileum, it was uh, 2.5 times higher in relation uh, with uh, the control group. So the bottom line is LPS disrupt the gut functions, even uh, when uh, they uh, are uh, into the bloodstream. Well, as uh, uh, mediators of inflammation, of course, LPS are uh, pyrogenic, so they induce a uh, fever, and of course, uh, inflammation also lowers uh, feed intake and energy intake. And uh, this uh, is uh, the cloacal temperature of uh, broilers uh, that were challenged with LPS uh, coming uh, from uh, Salmonella. And, uh, and the fever, uh, sorry, the temperature uh, was measured at uh, three hours after the challenge. Um, some researchers have reported an increase uh, in temperature in poultry up to 2.2 Celsius degrees. But uh, in uh, this uh, trial, the uh, maximum increase uh, was uh, 0 0.7. The age of the animals, uh, when uh, the first challenge occurred was uh, 13 days, and when the second challenge occurred uh, was uh, 15 days. In both cases, uh, well, uh, the challenge induced a uh, fever in the animals. We know also that fever and inflammation response, uh, they lead to lower feed intake and of course uh, to changes in energy utilization. So, uh, these uh, challenges, uh, we also know that can result uh, in a mitochondrial injury. So cell injury and also mitochondrial injury. And uh, with this, of course, uh, we have an alteration of energy metabolism. This study uh, measure ATP. So um, uh, a, a molecule highly uh, related uh, with uh, um, energy and it was measured uh, in the digesta, in the jejunum and the ileum of uh, LPS uh, challenge broilers and uh, it was measured by HPLC. The intestinal content uh, uh, had a reduction of 15% uh, in relation with the control group in the jejunum and of 55% uh, in relation uh, with the control group uh, in the ileum. So the bottom line here Yes, LPS induce uh, fever and uh, also uh, lowers uh, feed intake and energy utilization. But is this having repercussions, repercussions in performance?
I check here the performance parameters of a broiler challenge width, and this is a lower challenge. This is a, let's say, more, almost more realistic uh, challenge uh, that occasionally uh, we can see in stress animals. Um, they were challenged uh, with 200 micrograms per kilo, also intraperitoneal of uh, Salmonella enterica LPS. And the body weight gain was lowered. And uh, of course, at the same time, feed intake was reduced, but not enough uh, to, um, um, uh, to mask um, the effect uh, in a body weight gain. Uh, so um, the feed conversion rate was increased uh, for these animals. So is this having repercussions in performance? Yes, it is. Occasionally, it can. And uh, of course, uh, many times uh, this can be um, attributed to another uh, type of disease, not necessarily to a challenge uh, of endotoxins. Because if you have a challenge of endotoxins uh, coming uh, uh, from the intestine, uh, there are uh, probably other problems that also the flock is suffering. So we all agree, and uh, we need to look at uh, some factors that can increase this LPS uh, passage into the bloodstream. Among these factors, uh, we can find stocking density. Uh, when uh, uh, stocking density is high, uh, it constitutes a stress factor for broilers. Uh, this uh, uh, high stocking density can limit, uh, for example, the bird's ability uh, to uh, move uh, given uh, the uh, limited space. And uh, this uh, uh, also can lead to, to difficulties to find uh, feed and water or to have access to feed and water for some animals. It lowers uh, the quality of the litter. So in general, the animals are going to be at least in a mild state of stress if uh, the stocking density is high. In this experiment, we are showing stocking, uh, increased stocking densities from uh, 15.2 up to uh, 30.4 uh, birds per square meter. If uh, we want to put it in kilos, uh, the maximum stocking density uh, will be around uh, 40 uh, kilos per uh, kilogram, uh, given uh, the age uh, in uh, which the animals uh, were slaughtered. Well, um, of course, uh, we know uh, that a higher stocking density, when we compare it uh, to animals living in a no lower uh, stocking density, performance uh, will decrease. And yes, it is not shown here, uh, but the performance was uh, decreased in the experiment. Um, uh, however, uh, it also, it, it did uh, show or increase LPS uh, levels in the serum. So this is uh, what uh, we can see in the graph. Um, we know that stress uh, can uh, lead uh, to a lowered intestinal barrier function and uh, thus uh, this could be the cause of uh, this uh, increasing uh, serum LPS levels uh, that uh, we see in the graph and they are especially increased uh, with the higher stocking density. On the other side, uh, we can see uh, an interaction uh, between endotoxins and mycotoxins and uh, how this uh, can lead uh, to the loss of barrier. This is from another experiment. And in this experiment, uh, a challenge uh, of deoxynivalenol and LPS uh, was combined. And uh, as a result, uh, there was uh, um, a loss uh, of the barrier function uh, in, um, uh, in the intestine. Uh, in this case, uh, uh, what was measured uh, was um, the conductance uh, of, uh, um, of the tissue in uh, the jejunum uh, of, uh, of the broilers and a higher conductance is uh, correlated with the loss of the barrier function and this effect was achieved uh, at its highest uh, point in the experiment when uh, DON and LPS uh, were combined. The challenge of uh, DON alone uh, didn't get uh, this increase, but uh, when the challenge of DON uh, was combined with a challenge uh, of LPS, well, 
uh, then uh, we have a loss of Fourier function. This all uh, was uh, presented and I wanted to bring it because let's remember, when uh, we have broilers in commercial production, we will have uh, multiple st stress factors at the same time. So these multiple stress factors uh, would uh, at any point collide and we may have loss of barrier function. We may have, um, let's say, alterations in the microbiota and uh, we uh, may have um, a higher uh, quantity of uh, bacteria um, being lysed or dying in the intestine and uh, therefore uh, a risk of uh, passage of LPS into the bloodstream. Well, um, uh, of course, another factor of uh, uh, increasing uh, the passage of uh, LPS into the bloodstream is heat stress. And uh, uh, this is uh, quite common in some regions. In this experiment, uh, there was uh, an induction of acute heat stress at uh, 28 days of age of the animal. So again, no uh, challenge uh, of uh, LPS in this experiment. And uh, the temperature, the room temperature was increased from 22 to 38 Celsius degrees maintaining uh, the relative humidity at uh, 60%. The heat challenge was then maintained for zero, so a control group, two, five, and 10 hours. After each period, a sample of the birds was, was taken and, uh, uh, well, uh, the parameters were measured. So first, acute heat stress increase uh, intestinal permeability. This is also not shown here. But uh, of course, uh, heat stress is also related uh, with uh, an imbalance in the gut microbiota. And uh, this imbalance can liberate a high quantity of endotoxins and uh, then uh, they can pass into the bloodstream like uh, we have here. So the, L uh, the LPS, uh, measured in endotoxin units per milliliter was increased uh, in uh, these animals uh, in a, um, uh, let's say, stress uh, time or challenge uh, time dependent manner. So stress liberates uh, a higher uh, quantity of endotoxins uh, that uh, can pass into the bloodstream. And the increase in uh, gene expression of toll-like receptor 4 was also related uh, with uh, these uh, uh, increasing endotoxins. So uh, we can uh, see that uh, both curves uh, are exactly the same. And the highest uh, exposure uh, to heat stress uh, got the highest uh, also expression of uh, TL like, uh, total like receptor 4. Thus, heat stress should also be regarded as a factor of uh, endotoxin liberation. So we have seen a couple of factors now, heat stress, uh, we have uh, talked about the mycotoxins and uh, we uh, have uh, talked about stock density. Um, but now, of course, uh, we know uh, that uh, uh, there are uh, many uh, opportunities uh, for uh, the animals to be exposed uh, to these uh, factors uh, that may increase LPS passage into the bloodstream. But uh, we need to do something. We need to, to take actions uh, to try at least uh, to diminish this effect. So uh, one alternative uh, that uh, we can have is uh, the use of phytomolecules. The animals in this experiment receive phytomolecules in liquid form daily uh, from a zero to, well, from day one to 15 days. And uh, these uh, 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 phytomolecules were mainly carbacrol. At day 15, the animals were challenged with 500 micrograms per kilogram of uh, Salmonella enterica LPS. And two hours after the challenge, uh, well, uh, these uh, uh, immune parameters uh, were measured. So first, um, a TL4, toll-like receptor 4, was simulated uh, by the challenge uh, of LPS, like we can see here. 
and uh, this effect uh, was uh, diminished uh, by uh, the use uh, of uh, the phytomolecule uh, uh, for uh, the uh, period of 15 days. Also, uh, the same uh, was observed by the expression of uh, tumor necrosis factor alpha. And a tumor necrosis factor alpha is also an inflammatory cytokine uh, that uh, is mediating uh, apoptosis. So, same. The uh, phytomolecule help uh, to uh, diminish uh, the effects uh, of LPS. How? Well, uh, probably uh, because uh, uh, phytomolecules uh, have anti-inflammatory effects as well as uh, antioxidant uh, 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 effects. Another alternative uh, to mitigate the effects of LPS uh, are adsorbents. So mycotoxin binders or toxin adsorbents uh, or antitoxin products. We evaluated uh, here the effects uh, of uh, an LPS challenge of 400 micrograms per milliliter in a line of uh, swine intestinal cells, ipec 2 with and without uh, the toxin adsorbent, of course. So the results show first an increase on interleukin-8 when the challenge is applied, but not when the challenge is applied together with the adsorbent. On the other side, uh, also, uh, these uh, effects were further assessed by measuring the activity of uh, a, a TNF uh, kappa B, so tumor necrosis factor kappa B, in the same cell line. In the red dots, uh, we can, uh, it's shown the signal uh, that the, the production of cytokine is having on the tissue. So this is associated with a higher inflammation response, which is lower when we add the adsorbent. So there are, uh, as a bottom line, multiple strategies to manage uh, the risk uh, of uh, myco and endotoxins in animal production. The decision uh, that, uh, uh, of uh, which strategy to adopt uh, is, needs to be considered uh, also with the, the many factors uh, that uh, can influence it. Uh, but of course, uh, being uh, backed by science or the science uh, behind the alternative uh, definitely uh, plays a very important role. To uh, finish the presentation, uh, we um, need uh, yeah, to think about some things while we stay at home. Uh, so at the moment, uh, as we need to, to remain at home, and this is advice for everyone as well, uh, this is a good time uh, to think about the burden of toxins uh, in animal production. Uh, of course, uh, toxins, and we are talking about uh, mycotoxins and bacterial toxins, uh, they represent a challenge uh, for the welfare, health, and uh, productivity of the animals. But at the same time, uh, we need uh, to not think about the toxins in an isolated manner, but uh, we need also uh, to uh, think about the factors uh, that may be increasing the effects of these toxins. And uh, we talked about uh, some of them uh, today, stocking density, heat stress, uh, we, we we need uh, to uh, make an evaluation and an assessment of uh, the conditions in uh, which uh, we are uh, producing uh, animals. So um, this complexity, uh, all of uh, these pieces shouldn't be taken lightly uh, because it, it affects the animals, it affects their welfare, health and production. Therefore, we need to find ways, uh, we need to find strategies to uh, manage all of these risks. Thank you very much for your attention. Uh, we have uh, reached uh, the uh, end of the presentation. And now uh, we go to our uh, question and answer session. So I would like to ask uh, the panelists to share uh, some interesting questions that may have uh, come during the presentation. Yes, thank you, Maria Isabella. Thank you very much. Uh, uh, we decided to answer uh, speaking because the questions are not uh, so many. Therefore, I would like to answer uh, to Ramalingan uh, as a first uh, question, which environment condition favor endotoxin production more 
the question, the answer is uh, yes, it's very important the, the, the amount of uh, endotoxin present in the lumen intestine, but uh, uh, the, the more important problem is how is the, uh, the, the let's say the, uh, the activity of lipopolysaccharide in consideration the uh, synergistic activity with bacteria and mycotoxin. Therefore, of course, if we treat an animal with some particular antibiotics, for example, colistine, that, uh, which have a particular activity in terms of uh, emulsifier, uh, Colinstein attacked the, the lipid wall of uh, bacteria and create the lysis of bacteria. Uh, creating the lysis uh, of gram-negative bacteria, of course, we release a lot of uh, lipopolysaccharides free in the lumen because the lipopolysaccharides are part of the structure of bacteria itself. And uh, therefore, it's important to have uh, or maybe to, to, to consider the, the quantity of lipopolysaccharide, but also is important what kind of bacteria contamination we have in the intestine, because lipopolysaccharides are dangerous themselves, but also are more dangerous, of course, if they found a situation in enterocytes already degraded, because maybe some uh, activity of some uh, uh, coliform uh, like hemorrhagic uh, coliform, for example, would use a particular uh, verotoxins to destroy the, and to create a necrosis in, uh, in the enterocytes, the lipopolysaccharides are more uh, virulent. And also we have to consider, as Marisabel said, the synergistic activity with some mycotoxin, tricotechenes, for example. Therefore, this is the most important part. More than considering the quantity of lipopolysaccharide in the lumen, this is very difficult to measure. Okay. Mm. Maybe Van, do you want to answer to someone? Um, I will, um, yeah, uh, since uh, one image is not there, I wonder why. Okay. I will uh, uh, answer uh, one of the questions. Uh, so are, are endotoxins, LPS from drug negative bacteria, the same effect in the gut? Can mm -hmm. we say some groups of bacteria have strong or weak? Well, uh, um, it, I, I, will, I will make an affirmation, yes, um, yes, uh, but, uh, but no. In reality, uh, what, uh, what I mean is that all endotoxins have not the same effect in the gut. So we uh, have uh, some endotoxins that can be considered, let's say, more virulent than others, or that uh, elicit immune, uh, stronger immune responses than others. Of what does it depend? Uh, well, uh, it depends uh, not on the, li on the lipid A, stru or or the structure of the lipid A, but on the structure of uh, the O antigen. So if this structure is complete, for example, is not broken and intact, the virulence is higher, but it is also uh, species and strain specific. So yes, we can find uh, some uh, differentiations. So first by species and strain, and uh, second uh, by um, the completeness uh, or the, uh, uh, when the O antigen is intact or not. Thank you for your question. Uh, okay, I would like to answer to Melchior de Bruin. Is a high level of coliform bacteria as a source of endotoxin in poultry feed or raw material also able to cause a subclinical effect in poultry? Or is this a relatively small contribution? But depending of the contamination of, of, of the feed, of course, mm -hmm. but also, uh, as uh, already mentioned by Marisabel, depending of the kind of coliform that we have, because uh, uh, we have different virulence from different uh, kind of coliform. We have, we can, uh, uh, let's say, uh, classify, classify the, 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 the coliform in three big groups, uh, enterotoxigens, enteropathogens, and hemorrhagic. Therefore, every kind of group have a different virulence in the, against the enterocytes. Therefore, it's important the amount of coliform present in the, in the, in the, in the gut and the diet also, because there's some diet we know that maybe can increase more gram-negative than uh, gram-positive. 
and also the kind of coliform that we have uh, if we are speaking about oxygenic or hemorrhagic or enteropathogenic. Uh, the, the, the activity is very different and the, the, the danger is very different. Uh. Okay, um, I would like uh, to answer a question as well. Which... Uh, maybe Marisabel, you can answer to Rakesh. I, uh, yes, I have Thick one. Manganese, yeah. Yes, exactly that one. Uh, that one is, uh, <laughs> I, I, I think you can see that this is the one that I chose uh, to, to answer. So the question from uh, Dr. Rakesh Nim Balkar is uh, think, think manganese and copper metabolism depends uh, of the levels of uh, superoxide dismutase, carbonic anhydrase and glutathione peroxidase. When our diet is contaminated with multiple toxins ca causing oxidati oxidative stress in such situation, can we go with increasing levels or dosages of toxin binder along with high levels of mineral? Um, well, the best way to deal with mycotoxins is through prevention. So uh, the first thing that uh, we need uh, to have in line is a very good uh, sampling uh, procedure uh, for raw materials that are in risk uh, of uh, mycotoxin contamination. Then when we know what is the risk uh, that we will uh, have upfront, then we can take decisions. We can uh, have a, an interpretation of this risk. We uh, can uh, predict uh, what the consequences can be. And uh, we, of course, need uh, to take actions in order to prevent uh, these consequences. The first action that I would uh, recommend, and uh, probably uh, my colleague Claudia will not be happy, is to avoid the contamination. Use something else. Look uh, for uh, uh, raw materials that are less or non-contaminated with mycotoxins. This is almost impossible, to be honest. I, I have a, a worked a, also in a feed mill and yeah, can be hard. However, uh, we uh, always uh, keep a, a range of anti-mycotoxin products that can help with this. Uh, most of the anti-mycotoxin products are good, but they are not 100% effective. So let's uh, look uh, for anti-mycotoxin products that may have additional effects. Uh, and like you mentioned, for example, uh, an antioxidant effect uh, that uh, can help the animals uh, to cope uh, with uh, the challenges of mycotoxins. I wouldn't go with higher or too high uh, levels uh, of minerals because we also want uh, to avoid uh, nutritional imbalances in the diet. Done. Okay. Uh, next question, yes. Yes, I, I would like to answer to uh, Anurag, Yena. Um, antibiotic treatment also might lead to increased endotoxemia. Uh, what are the different control measures uh, we may take to minimize its effect? Uh, yes, of course, I confirm that the antibiotic treatment can uh, lead, the, can increase the uh, endotoxemia. That's clear, as uh, we already mentioned before, especially some kind of antibiotic because uh, as soon as we create a lysis of gram negative, we release a lot of LPS in the lumen intestine. That also happens in the internal, uh, in the macrophages uh, internally uh, using uh, peroxidized, oxy, hydrox, hydroxy peroxidized uh, lease the, 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 the LPS because the, there is the lysis of the cell. Uh, about the measurement, uh, hey, it's very difficult to measure the level and the quantity of LPS free in the lumen of intestine in animal, of course. Uh, what we can do is to measure to have some biomarkers and uh, we can control by some biomarkers and uh, the most important, for example, as uh, in the presentation of Marisabel were mentioned by her, the interleukin uh, inflammatory cytokines present in the blood and the level of interleukina 8, 1 beta or 6 or tumor necrotic factor can give us a level of, uh, let's say, inflammation and the level of reaction of immune system that we have in the animal. Therefore, we can understand, uh, but it's 
difficult to correlate, in my opinion, the level, this biomarket with the treatment of antibiotics because we, uh, when we need to treat an, an animal uh, with the antibiotic, because the animal is sick, we need to treat it. <laughs> that, that's, that's clear. Uh, therefore, we know that probably antibiotic increase the endotoxemia, but the, the best solution should be to prevent this situation, probably with phytogenics, uh, exa uh, for example, as uh, Marisa Bell mentioned, and also binders of toxin. <laughs> Good. I have a question also that I would like to answer, and this is uh, from Heinrich Kleine Klausing. Yeah. Um, the question is, are there scientific investigation on the influence of endotoxins on liver health and liver metabolism available in the literature? Do you see an important influence uh, which might cause performance losses in broiler chicks or is the fattening period too short for having significant negative influence uh, on liver? Well, there are three questions actually there, Heinrich. Um, first question, scientific investigation. Uh, yes, uh, as uh, you also know, uh, the liver is involved in the clearance of uh, mycotoxins when they pass into the bloodstream. So yes, uh, there is uh, um, uh, scientific studies, uh, there is scientific literature available on this topic. However, it uh, was not on the scope uh, of uh, this presentation because we wanted to limit uh, uh, that uh, to uh, the gastrointestinal tract. If I think it's important in broiler chicks, um, well, my favorite answer to questions is it depends. Of course, uh, on uh, other stress factors uh, that uh, we may have at certain moments. Uh, but I will consider it of higher importance uh, in uh, other uh, poultry uh, species uh, like uh, uh, breeders or uh, laying hens. Thank you for your question. Um, okay, I would like to answer to Neira. Uh, do the friendly microbiota also produces LPS? If yes, how does LPS fight against unwanted bacteria? Uh, LPS uh, are um, the part of the wall of all gram-negative bacteria. Therefore, all gram-negative bacteria have LPS as a structure of the, the, the walls. Therefore, is in, LPS are always present in the lumen of intestine. Uh, the most important thing is to create, not a dysbiosis, but uh, a, let's say a, a, a sort of um, a balance between let's call uh, friendly <laughs> uh, microbiota and bad microbiota in order not to have a high level of free LPS in the lumen of intestine because uh, we, can, we can survive, we can live with a certain level of LPS, but we have to maintain the level of LPS and the, and the, and the uh, microbiota in the right way. This is the best thing to have the best performance. Uh, when there is the dysbiosis, so also maybe the level of LPS are very high, in this case we have problem. Um, uh, good. Um, I see that uh, some of the participants uh, are uh, leaving yes. uh, the, um, the webinar, but before you leave, I would like uh, to ask you, like uh, we said at the beginning, uh, to fill uh, one poll. So uh, we will display the poll on, uh, on the screen and I apologize for the questions uh, that remain unanswered. We will do our best uh, to give you an answer by email as soon as possible. Yes. And uh, uh, now uh, please uh, fill uh, or uh, vote on this poll. I hope that you can see it. In uh, three, two, one, there it is. Uh, please uh, take uh, uh, three to five minutes uh, just to uh, fill this poll, which uh, will help us uh, to improve uh, these events in the future. I uh, want uh, to thank you a lot for your attention and for your questions. Thank you. Thank you very much. Yeah, and also for filling the poll. Bye bye, have a nice day. And uh, of course, uh, while we fill the poll, I would like also to advise you 
uh, to uh, do the best uh, to protect uh, your health and uh, the health of others by uh, yeah avoiding uh, human contact uh, by uh, yeah practicing uh, social distancing for a while. Very good. I hope that the topic of today has uh, been uh, useful uh, for you. And uh, with that, uh, we uh, finish this webinar. Have a very good uh, evening. Thank you very much. Bye. Have a good evening. Bye.